Okay, I'm Mrs. Paul. I teach honors, pre-AP and AP chemistry at Whitten High School. And I have been teaching here since 1996. Okay, during those, the past 17 years, my routine has always been, I lecture, my plan is always to lecture only for 15 minutes, but before you know it, Almost the whole period would go by and I don't really have a chance to walk around and interact with my students. Ask me one word or one thing I can remember from UDL is choices. So this is one thing because not, every, not everybody learns the same way. Okay, so I may learn better by watching a YouTube video, but someone else may do, they can do better reading the textbook. So I think by doing this, it's not really mainly about flipping your classroom. This is another way, another method for the students to learn. So this is, they have different choices. They have uh, my PowerPoint mm -hmm. on headline. They have the whole textbook online. They have uh, even the worksheet, the workout in class, they have those worksheets online. So they can do their homework online, they can do it on paper. Uh, I even offer them to take their quizzes on paper or online. So they have those uh, those choices. Okay. Well, in the beginning of the year, um, she used to lecture a lot, and it was very hard to grasp the topics because you would have to go home and kind of try and learn it on yourself. Now, second semester, she's changed her um, her way of teaching into doing like YouTube videos, and you would watch it at home, and then coming in class, and you get help, and it's much more helpful and effective because now my grades have boosted two letter grades. And um, it's very helpful for myself, and I'm sure it's very helpful for other students. Your grades have done what? They've boosted up to letter mm. grades. <laughs> More interactive. Good for you. Yeah, That's great. You feel like you probably know how to do the problem. Yeah, I know how to do more of the math, like the molality and molarity, so that's really nice. Great. Yeah. Miss Paul's uh, teaching style allows us to take responsibility for our learning because we're able to watch her videos at home and that way when we get into our classroom it allocates time for us to talk to our peers to either better understand it or even work on classwork and homework. Us watching these videos it gives us time to interact with other students and when she's not lecturing us all day like she normally does she can actually help us out in class rather than boring us to death. This semester. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's more hands-on and interactive. That's good. And then I uh, cannot control exactly where I go to, when I go too fast, too slow, when mm -hmm. I'm too loud, when I'm too, or they cannot hear. Mm -hmm. But now they have the volume. They can, uh, I tell them they can put my voice down. They can put me as a whisper if they want. Mm -hmm. They can put me loud. Mm -hmm. They can uh, fast forward me. Mm -hmm. If they don't want to, me to repeat the same thing, mm -hmm. or they can slow me down, they can pause me. If they get tired of listening to me, they can even shut me down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I uh, record, did my first recording on my iPad, and I post the website. It was not on YouTube. Post the, web, the site on headline, send an email, to the parents and the students, asking the parents to give the message to the students to watch my lecture to be ready for the next class. 
And I was shocked when I came back, most of the students watched the video. So when I came, instead of just lecturing that day, they used that time to complete that, 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 the homework for that day. So. After the second one, half of the video came out with no sound. Mm. The students watched the video. I didn't even check it out before I posted. it. The student told me, but there was no sound. <laughs> so this is a, really a learning process. So as I go day by day, I keep on learning and learning from the students themselves. So now I'm getting a little bit better and I'm still, I'm still learning, trying to get better at it. Because even of my uh, accent, I don't even speak the language clearly. I did not want to put any recording public on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So I made it private. Mm -hmm. The students went on headline trying to open the site and they asked them for a code or something. They couldn't watch it. Mm -hmm. So they sent me an email asking me. I had to go and put it public even though I did not want that. And then I told them, is there any way I can put it on for only my students to have access to it? And a student told me how to do it. So all of this I'm learning as I go through. That's great. <laughs> so now I have all of them on uh, unlisted. Mm -hmm. It is not private. It's not public. It is unlisted. I have about uh, 22 videos <laughs> on that. Uh, People that got to watch the video at home now have a chance to do the homework in class. Ask Ms. Paul questions about calm or any other problem. If they finish the homework early, they don't have any homework to do later. They can work in groups, talk to classmates, ask questions, just basically get ahead of the class. Ms. Paul's teaching style adds another dimension to the learning. Instead of having to try and do the homework at home and understand the concepts by yourself, you watch the video, then when you get to class, she's there to reinforce what you already learned. Un unlike other lecture classes where the teacher would take a long time explaining the subject and at the end the student is left alone to pretty much puzzle what they got in class, in class we don't have to waste any time and Ms. Paul can just go to teach us more about what she explained in the video, and if necessary, you know, elaborate on certain topics. In here, you can see that people are watching the video in class because they did not get a chance to do watch it at home. People can ask questions to Ms. Paul about the video, and also ask questions about the classwork after they're done watching the video. Even when I don't feel like recording now, I have students asking me to do it. One morning, I came here at 7 a.m. A student was at my door. It was uh, Najma. She said, Mrs. Paul, I'm going to a field trip. Would you please record your lecture today? Goodbye. And I have other occasions where students were sick. They asked me, did you record your, your lecture? I have students, uh, I have a student first semester who missed 19 days of school. And then I recorded the review for the final exam. She watched those reviews and came back and got a B on the final exam. And then this student is still, is, has multiple absences this semester. He's, she spends more time outside the classroom than in, well, even if I were not to flip the class completely, at least that student would benefit for my lectures. Mm -hmm. I have other cases, even students who are in class, I have magnet students who come and tell me, I cannot take notes in class because the other students are really uh, jumping, they are pushing you, they, mm -hmm. I don't have time to really digest the material. Please record the lecture so I can go back, take my time, and take notes. I have a student who brought me her binder with all her organized notes. She said she took while she was watching 
the, the videos. So it, it's still uh, good for the student to have that recording to go back and review the notes. I have found her videos very useful. Even though we're the magnet and she records them in our class, my classmates and I often go back to help clarify what we've learned in class and to make sure that we've been that we've remembered things correctly and that we didn't make any mistakes with our notes. Even if I wanted to stop now, the students are asking me to do it. <laughs> and then I can really feel I feel the difference already, even though it had been only what four months? What difference do you feel? Not only on the grades. I feel like I'm getting, I'm having a better relationship with the students also. There are students in my classes who would never talk to me, who would never raise their hand and ask me questions in class. Now I'm walking around, those students are talking to me. They are asking me questions while they are doing the homework. So I can feel I'm not the same teacher who used to stand in front of the room and um, not, not even remembering some of the names sometimes. The students just walk in and then walk out without me having any conversation with him or her. Mm. And I also have students who would just hoping another student would, would ask the question he or she would have, but that student would never ask that question, hoping. But now they can really, they can ask me directly. Mm. So you know more, more um, real relationships. Definitely, building. I feel it. Yes, yeah, they feel it. I feel like some students they feel more, they feel proud that they are getting the, the, the they are getting the, the information now. They feel so proud. They are walking around, showing off, explaining, tutoring. <laughs> if you come doing real time here, I don't tutor. I don't help the student doing real time. Those students who are watching the video, who understand the material better, they are the ones doing the job. They are helping the others. It's when, you, when you want to find out which yes. way it shifts, count the moles of gases. Six moles plus one, that's seven. Four plus one, that's five. Eight. And then it will shift to the one that has the less moles. So does that mean if you add ACL, it will shift to the left? Yeah, because there's less pressure there and it wants to reach equilibrium. Ninety percent of the time in class is having students interact with each other. It's not just interacting with me; they are interacting with each other. I don't even tell them where to sit. Once we are done with attendance, with a warm up, they just move to a table with some classmen and they are working. They are very busy working, and then this is not about lazy teaching either because I feel like I am more engaged, I am running our, around more than I used to. <laughs> so I'm very busy doing class because I have students calling me, at, uh, uh, calling me back and forth, asking the same questions. So I'm walking around helping, but they are helping each other. They are, when uh, nobody from that table can answer that question, then that's when when they call me. So it is, it is really, it's not about just sitting down and giving them a video to watch. It is really engagement for everybody, students and teachers. Mm -hmm. Okay, what happened is before I always have not only my sitting shot for the lecture, but also for lab, before I come here, I had each student in their group to make sure those two friends do not get together and spend their time socializing. So I always have structure, structure, structure. Okay, I don't really give them a choice to, to get with their partners. I do that for them. I just realized right now, after months of... Uh, Flipping the classroom, letting them into group. I just realized I never assign any student to any group, and then everything is working out. I don't have any chaos. Every the, the, the students are busy working, 
even though I did not tell them who to work with and what, what exactly how to behave. And they are, they are using their time wisely. I'm glad I did not think of that to make my groups until now that, that, now that it's working, then I let it go. Yeah. You just want everything. And this is my character. I want everything to be just perfect, uh -huh. perfect. And it's working without me working on that perfection. It, they are working. And that's what we want. We want them to work, to learn it. And they are learning. I have a student. I have one, at least one student I can believe right now who was failing. He was failing. Now, he's a, really a leader. He got a 10 out of 10 on the first, before last quiz. This time he got a nine just because I'm picky. I took some points off units. He's just, he's so proud of himself. Never, never got so, those great before. Because he's, he's, he, he's choosing how to learn. I let him choose the way he can learn better. 